Assalamu salamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. In the name of Allah, the most gracious, the most merciful, my brothers, my sisters across the globe. Firstly, I want to congratulate you upon the commencement of the most beautiful month of the lunar calendar, the Islamic calendar. This is the month of Ramadan. It's a month in which good deeds are multiplied in reward. And at the same time, a month in which the Almighty's forgiveness is distributed and given to everyone who wants it so we will achieve forgiveness every single night there are so many people whom allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grants freedom from hellfire my brothers my sisters it is the month in which the Quran was revealed, so we take it seriously. We must develop a connection with the Quran. You cannot let a day of Ramadan go by without having read the Quran, be it in the Arabic language or the meaning of it, or learning its rules and regulations, trying to put it into practice, conveying it to others. So congratulations upon being granted the acceptance to witness this beautiful month because there are so many people who have not been able to witness this month they've passed on before the month may allah almighty grant them paradise may allah forgive their shortcomings and give them jannah give them the highest levels of paradise and the day we pass on may allah make it a blessed day and may he forgive us and grant us too entry into jannah into paradise so those of us who have witnessed the commencement of this beautiful month, I am in Medina Munawwara, the Medina, the city of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. He is resting very near to where I am standing. May Allah Almighty gather us in paradise in the companionship of Muhammad. May peace be upon him. My brothers, my sisters, I want to let you know what happened for me this evening. Obviously, the moon was sighted somewhere in Saudi Arabia and this part of the globe and those who follow this part of the globe in moon sighting commenced. The commencement of Ramadan usually is with the announcement and immediately the ambience changes. Everyone is in Ramadan mode. People are greeting each other, conveying the news, excited, preparing, washing themselves, having a bath or a shower or making what is known as wudu or the ablution, getting ready for the prayer. The night prayer is what commences this beautiful month of Ramadan. In Al-Masjid Al-Nabawi, where we were, they closed the doors of the masjid about when Adhan was called. So just when Adhan was called, the doors were closed. They were not allowing people to enter. So if you are visiting Medina Munawwara, you will need to make it in the Masjid Nabawi inside before Adhan commences. That's just a tip. And the idea was to keep the crowds managed. To be honest, we made it in because we, were, we had entered just as Adhan was ending. And there was a door that was still open. So we were fortunate. But many people were unable to enter. They had to fulfill their prayers either in the rooftop, on the rooftop, which has carpet on it, mashallah. And uh, it, it was just a little bit warm, uh, according to some of those who were there. Or they had to make it outside in the courtyards. The courtyards also have carpet and there were tens of thousands of people in the courtyards, perhaps hundreds of thousands inside. When we went in, we walked around the masjid. It was full. It was full, mashallah. But it was not cramped or squashed because they had controlled the crowds. There was good space. There is air conditioning, mashallah. And uh, uh, sometime later, the iqama commenced you know, announcing the beginning of the salah and the prayer of Isha. And then we fulfilled Salat al-Isha, we fulfilled Salat al-Taraweeh, we did Salat al-Witr, and we managed to come out. So, from among the verses that were read, this was the beginning of the Qur'an. Every time the emotions are running high, mashallah, uh, it seemed like, may Allah make it easy for the Imams, but they had a little bit of a throat problem, both of the Imams. May Allah make it easy for them and for all of us. Uh, at the same time, Salat al-Qiyam, meaning the, the Salah, the Taraweeh, 
uh, commences obviously with Surah Al-Fatiha, just like all other prayers. You have to fulfill Surah Fatiha in every unit, in every unit. Why? Because it is Ummul Kitab, it is the mother of the book. The term mother in the Arabic language is used to express importance of something. So it's the most important Surah in the entire Quran, Surah Al-Fatiha. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. All praise is due to Allah. All play, praise is due to Allah, Lord of the worlds. The creator, the nourisher, the cherisher, the sustainer, the provider, the protector, the curer. The one in whose hands lies complete control of everything in existence. All praise is owed to him, is due to him. To him belongs praise. Allahumma lak alhamdu. O oh Allah, to you belongs praise. Allahumma lak alhamdu an tarda. O oh Allah, to you belongs praise so that you are pleased. And to you belongs praise until you are pleased. And to you belongs praise after you are pleased. Lak alhamdu an tarda, wa lak alhamdu hatta rida, wa lak alhamdu idha radita, wa lak alhamdu ba'da rida. This is the Almighty. We should be looking at what He has blessed us with. The biggest blessing being faith in Him. The best feeling that I had this evening was when my, when my head was on the ground, on the marble, and I put my head on the ground and I said, Subhana Rabbi Al-A'la, Subhana Rabbi Al-A'la, praising my Lord, the one who made me the greatest, that feeling, I didn't want to get up because I, I felt so close to Allah Almighty. Subhanallah. And I'm sure all of us would be feeling this when you know what sujood is all about, when you know what prostration is all about, and you understand you are the closest to your maker in the posture of prostration. The closest that you can get to your Lord, the closest that a slave is to his maker is when he is in prostration and you are saying oh allah my head has prostrated for you the head that you have created the face that you have made has prostrated to you the one that you have allowed its eyes to be split open and its ears to actually hear and so on these are beautiful supplications of the posture of prostration or position should i say of prostration my brothers my sisters Thereafter, we had uh, the, the beautiful verses of the surah continue. Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim. Allah chooses to mention His names and qualities, commencing with the most merciful, the most beneficent, the most kind, the most forgiving. These beautiful qualities of Allah, because the world is hopeless. The world is filled with hopelessness, but it is the Almighty who restores your hope. You have hope in what? In whom? In Allah. Allah alone will solve your problems. Allah alone will grant you goodness. Allah alone will protect you from harm. Allah alone will cure you. Allah alone will sustain you. Allah alone will fulfill your needs. Allah alone will grant you the protection that you need from the enemy, from the devil, from loss, from sickness, from disease, from all negativity. That is Allah, Ar-Rahman, Ar-Rahim. He is the most merciful. He is the most kind. He is the most compassionate, the most beneficent. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen, Ar-Rahman, Ar-Rahim, Maliki Yawmiddin. Gently, Allah is reminding us who the owner of the Day of Judgment is. He is Allah. Allah says, owner of the day of judgment. Immediately after he said, he is most merciful, he is most kind. If he wanted, he could have said, he is the punishing, he won't forgive you, he will hurt you, he will hit you, he will penalize you, he will throw you into hellfire. He could have said all of that right at the beginning. Yes, indeed, he is just. But he says, وَرَحْمَتِي وَسِعَتْ كُلَّ شَيْءٍ my mercy encompasses absolutely everything. Don't lose hope in my mercy, O oh my worship. That is Allah. So Allah Almighty says, owner of the day of judgment. Maliki yawmiddin, iyyaka na'budu wa iyyaka nasta'een. You alone we worship, O oh Allah. You alone we ask help from, O oh Allah. You are the one who will give us. You are the one who will help us. You are the one who will protect us, O oh Allah. So that reliance on Allah that I mentioned earlier, 
is exactly what we are reiterating and repeating when we say, Iyaka na'budu wa iyaka nasta'in. And we are confirming that we will worship none other than Him. Nobody besides our Maker. When we say, La ilaha illallah, Muhammadur Rasulullah, it is the most powerful statement in existence. There is none worthy of worship besides Allah. And Muhammad, peace be upon him, is His Messenger. So we won't worship anyone because they are not worthy of worship. Besides Allah, Allah says, إِيَّاكَ نَعْبُدْ وَإِيَّاكَ نَسْتَعِينَ You alone we worship, you alone we seek help from. إِهْدِنَ الصِّرَاطَ الْمُسْتَقِيمِ The first supplication made by all of us, the first supplication made in the Qur'an, the first supplication, the one that is repeated the most on earth. There is no supplication ever in history that has been repeated more than guide us to the straight path. The reason I say this is billions of Muslims, trillions, trillions, quadrillions of Muslims have passed from the time of Muhammad, peace be upon him, the revelation of the Quran to this day and shall pass right up to the end of time. They pray five times a day. They pray 17 units of prayer. And subhanallah, subhanallah, that is the minimum. In each unit, they have to say, guide us to the straight path. You do the mathematics. That is the most important supplication or dua in existence. What is it? <laughs> guide us to the straight path. Guide us to the straight path. You have laid rules and regulations. We heard verses of the Quran that have really given us lots of comfort. But we need to know the guidance is from Allah. Yes, someone can show you the path, but you may not tread it. Allah gives you that guidance and He allows you to tread upon the path that is Allah. So Allah says, Ihdina Sirat al Mustaqim. That is the supplication. We should all be making sincerely, Oh Allah, guide us. Do you know why? Whoever Allah misguides, there is no one who's going to guide that person. And man yahdillah fala mudillala. Whoever Allah guides, nobody can misguide them. So guidance is from Allah Almighty. My brothers, my sisters, sincerely seek the guidance of Allah. Go out and search and look for it. And at the same time, be sincere about it. Work hard towards it. Make an effort to, put, to make practice on it or to practice upon it. And make an effort to become a better person, to improve yourself. If you have witnessed this month of Ramadan, it is a favor of Allah upon you. Allah is going to question you. I was standing in prayer in Masjid al Nabawi, looking at hundreds of thousands of people. And subhanAllah, I'm telling myself, each one is here for his Lord. The Masjid was full before Adhan, it was already full. At Adhan, like I said, they closed the doors. Imagine all these people are here for who? For Allah, trying to please Him. I don't want to lose out on this competition. I don't want to lose out on this moment. I don't want to be the one who is not going to achieve the mercy of Allah. I'm, I want to in fact do better than everyone. I want to make sure I'm closer to Allah. I want to do as much as I can. I want to pray more. If you feel that the prayer they offered might have been a little bit less than you wanted to, the, the scope is open for your voluntary prayers. Continue through the night and pray more as much as you can. That is Ramadan, mashallah. You read the Quran, engage in the remembrance of Allah, learn, teach others, do whatever you have to. Improve yourself, engage in tawbah, Spend your time in worship. That is Ramadan. So remember, we are not the only ones. There are millions of others out there. Tonight, they have commenced their prayers. They have started. Why? Why are they all there? Why did they make an effort to fly to this part of the world? For example, they spent their money to please Allah, to be able to worship Allah in a masjid where the reward of one prayer is up to a thousand times according to some narrations. And some of them take it even higher than that. Masjid al Nabawi. So we'd like to pray. We'd like to spend our time. You know, people might be outside, alhamdulillah, doing their own things. We are inside. Thank Allah. Thank Allah. So this is why Allah Almighty reminds us to say guidance is from Allah. What path are we asking Allah to guide us upon? The straight path. It's not going to be easy. That's why it's repeated so much. But Allah Almighty tells us that you need to know what path this is. It's the path of those whom I have favored. If you tread this path, you are favored. Not the path of those who knew the truth and then they left it. So Allah was upset with them and not the path of those who were astray anyway. And they weren't even interested in the truth. Didn't I say, make an effort to go out and learn. Make an effort to tread upon it. Do not be, do not be proud or arrogant to give up. Meaning to give up bad. 
Don't be too proud that you're not going to give up this bad. I'm going to give it up. Because why? Subhanallah, a person who has a droplet, a person who has an atom's weight worth of pride in their hearts, Allah Almighty says, Jannah is not for them. Paradise is not for them. Remove that pride. No problem. If Allah tells you dress in a certain way, dress in that way. Change your life. See what will happen. If Allah tells you do this, do that. It's okay what the world thinks of you. No problem. You do what is right because the day you die, the whole world will not be with you. All of them are mortals just like you are. The immortal is Allah. So we owe it to him. This is the month of forgiveness. It's the month of reaching out to others. Imagine the end of the surah. Allah Almighty says, اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين. Amazing. Guide us to the straight path, the path of those whom you have favored, not the path of those who have earned your anger, nor the path of those who have gone astray. Amen. I heard that so many times this evening. I repeated it so many times this evening. We all do repeat it. Let's learn from this. This is today's boost. I pray that every day we can have a short message in order to boost us to do better during this month of Ramadan, to come out with good character, good conduct, but above all, to worship Allah alone, to surrender to Allah. In the deen, in the Allah Islam, when we hear the verse that indeed the deen, the religion, the belief, According to Allah, that is correct, is submission. Submission to who? To your maker. What does he want you to do? These rules and regulations are there to make life easy, not difficult. Inshallah, we'll address that in one of our boosts during this Ramadan. In the meantime, may Allah bless you all and grant you every form of goodness. And may Allah make this a month that is filled with worship, that is filled with change within us, that is filled with hope and goodness, that is filled with solution, that is filled with forgiveness. And may Allah Almighty grant us the best of everything, ultimately forgiveness and paradise.